Good morning. Good morning. Just realized my audio was off, so I don't know if y'all heard me. Good morning. Again. Hello, everyone. Hello. Give it a couple more minutes. Um, see who all will join. Good morning, Victor. Hello, Taylor. Good morning. All right. Hmm. Why is there such a large gap? Oh, maybe it's comments that we never closed. Okay, that's probably nice. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. <clears throat> so, Cloud Native Telco Day. Um, is happening, is approved, and CFPs are currently open. We're going to get folks in. We're also still looking for sponsorships for that, which will help with various activities there as well as ongoing for the event. So if you all know anyone that would be interested, there's stuff like badges and the lunch as well, besides the um, overall sponsors. So you can uh, come in at different levels, which will be highlighted. 
the some of the levels support having an entry uh, entries for someone uh, that would even get access to the higher levels I think give access to all of KubeCon so something to keep in mind especially if someone's already going to planning on sending folks to KubeCon um yeah a lot of different events we're trying to think about the telecom events where there'd be more overlap with what we're trying to do here and uh, listing some of those if there is any that y'all know about um, please add them so we can check them out doesn't mean that everyone's going to attend everything but if we know of it and there's enough interest maybe that'll be an area that where we can focus anyone have anything right now um well i given that you you mentioned the open source summit in north america i guess the open source summit in europe uh, is also publishing the, the website I, I just need to double check when are the dates mm -hmm. but yeah it, it is there all right Are you attending yourself or know that um, anything from, I guess, your, the group that's more telecom focused, anybody going to any other events that you think may be relevant for us to take a look at? Well, thank you, Lucina. No, in my case, I still need to discuss with my manager and she they approve um, any business travel. Uh, so. You're not approved for any travel? No, yet. Um, I'm still waiting. Um, they are doing the planning during these days. Right. Do you have any plans to turn on one of these? Um, I mean, besides the KubeCon, you know, KubeCon Cloud Native Telco Day, we we want to meet with as much folks and try to. Um, get people engaged and conversations started for the EU. We think that there's a lot of the, the, um, the folks that we've been working with that are involved with say Silva and other stuff mm -hmm. that I think the EU side is gonna be um, e at least with some travel restrictions and stuff that um, like you're, you're dealing with that we've seen and they weren't able to come to the North America. I think the EU was gonna be a big deal, but Connected America would be um, an interesting one. It seems like the type of work there though is longer term related to like government stuff. There's all the regulations and everything else. I think there's overlap there. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how um, we would approach it, but I, I think some of the stuff that we do here with regard to security and other stuff that can tie in with compliance could go into conversations there. MWC Barcelona would be great, but that one's a, a harder one to deal with. Um, this big five, I think, would be another one that we're seriously considering. There's so many events, you know, you got to decide if 
if you're not going to all of them, you know, trying to cut in which we're not, then cut it down. So any insight into those. Um, there seems to be from the conversations that we've had with folks, including people that have contributed into the, you know, the different community efforts like the working group and the test suite and stuff. MWC Barcelona seems to be where more of them are going to um, be for sure versus MWC Ameri Americas is a maybe for some. But I think for us, the Americas is more likely to be a place to be able to plan out to. What are your thoughts about the Open Source Summit and the telco cloud native stuff? Like, is it well, worthwhile to be trying to go to like the EU, open source EU? Well, in terms of like attendance, um, uh, they are giving the option to be virtual. So, I mean, uh, having a hybrid uh, conferences uh, sort of uh, two edges. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I don't know if people are going to try to reduce some some costs and, and just attend virtually. Um, the, the only open source summit that I have attended in person was in Austin. Um, it, it was good, but I didn't see too much content about uh, telcos and all this stuff related. So hopefully that change uh, or we can have our own track or things like that. Because yeah, you, I mean, all, all the, the presentations were great, but uh, I didn't see, I had to connect all these technologies with, with telco, like uh, how to figure out how can we use them. Um, that's that's my point of view about uh, open source summit in, in general. Um, regarding the cloud native talk today, uh, I think it's great uh, to have the space. Uh, I don't know if, if, if uh, I, I know that Joe Bella mentioned a couple of things in his uh, Twitter account about. Uh, PlayStation fees and all these things. And uh, I don't know if the CNCF has changed or do something regarding that, uh, regarding that, those particular uh, PlayStation fees. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I would like to see more, like more than half of a day, but I, the things are, they were they, 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 the way they are. So, um, and also I'm trying to encourage uh, the nephew community to participate in, in, in those events. I guess it would be awesome to see more nephew related stuff. Uh, I'm trying to understand a little more what nephew is bringing to, to the equation. What about um, having, and I, I may be uh, forgetting that something that's already moving forward, but have we gotten an FAO person to post a CFP for Cloud Native Telco Day? Yeah, I, I, that, would be, that would be great like that. We have something because there's a lot of people who are asking for more, more about more about nephew, so that's why I'm trying to. I mean, I, I'm pushing hard there to to speak more about nephew. Um, I, I think that they are going to do it because they are looking for spaces where they can announce and share what they have been doing. So I'm pretty sure that someone is going to submit something soon. Because even they, they consider the NWC in Barcelona as a way to meet up the community. But unfortunately, uh, 
the feedback or like the number of responses that they got it was low. So, um, so it seems like a KubeCon could be the best way to, to meet out the community. I'd like to think about maybe discuss a something a structured talk or event that brings folks together. We did have years ago there was a CNF working group talk where we ended up with quite a few people. And it was like a half day or multi-hour type of thing. And Maybe because it wasn't, I, I don't know. One of them went pretty well where there's a lot of discussions and one of them ended up, even though it was supposed to be more structured. I think part of it, we had folks running over time. Um, ideally, the Cloud Native Telco Day would be a place where we can get Nefio and um, Silva and other folks all in and I, I think there was someone that was interested in submitting for a Silva talk at Cloud Native Telco Day and I think I heard that some last week maybe so ideally we could have that but maybe we need some type of discussion time where make sure that people can get together outside of just the talks and they know that there's going to be a time for that the it seems like there needs to be a focus to have the conversation and it doesn't end up either people that don't know what it's going to be about don't care to spend time or it can go all over but some a some focus point that everyone's interested in the networking um sig multi-network those sessions at kubecon mm -hmm. i think they went pretty well as far as bringing in a lot of folks that weren't normally part of just the sig multi-network and if we could think about some topic that might be of interest to, you know, some of the groups that we'd like to collaborate with, NFIO and Silva and whoever else that, you know, if we can find something, here's, we're going to have a discussion about this and how it can impact or whatever. I think that could be positive and maybe with a goal of, you know, figure out what is the goal what, what are we going to take from this and then, you know, go and do. And Victor, that could be something, at least if we're going to drive it from the, the working groups side, then maybe something that we would take on with Tom to think about. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that's not specific to the working group, it's related to certification or the test suite or whatever else, as long as it's, something that we consider in scope but i'm i'm up for looking at something like that and and i'm not saying busy work or whatever i'm, I'm i'd really like to think of and none of us really have time for that what i'd like to think about what maybe brainstorm some ideas and then what goal what is a target thing that would have val real value for the different communities or the members specifically that are involved in those communities? You know, vendor is going to say, hey, this is an outcome that's important to me. So I want to be involved in the conversation. Service provider, same thing. One of the topics of Tal is, is um, has been 
lastly discussed about the, the NAFIA communities, about the, the operators. Uh, he has provided a lot of material and share his uh, point of view and things like that. So um, not sure if, if that could be an also a good starting point. Um, I mean, operators are great. Like uh, the, the, the argument that Cal is, is mentioning, like, yeah, <laughs> operators are great for certain cases, but in order to, to make them more accessible or like easier to implement or easy to implement in a correct way, it's very hard. So he's proposing new ideas and different uh, ways to implement all of them, uh, not using operator framework, just like not using another out of the, the standard methods. So um, and I don't know if that could be also a good topic or thing to bring as a point to discuss, like like how the the telecom operators has been approaching the development of these uh, Kubernetes operators. Do they have best practices or takeaways or things like that? I think that could be also quite interesting. Because also it's like an essential part of uh, uh, Nephew. Nephew relies too much on those operators. Uh, one of the ways to implement CNF. So any other thoughts? put out now and and again victor if you're up for it i'd i'd like to talk more about this and kind of look i think we need to have some time also to just plan what are we doing uh, in the working group for the year but mm -hmm. schedule some time does anyone else have any input thoughts all over because... yeah oliver has been a little bit quiet yeah Come on all yeah, sorry guys. I, I don't have anything at the moment. Um, nothing to add. Are we gonna have any Annika presence at, um, for Cloud Native Telco Day? Um, good question. Um, let me do this. I'll take that as an action. I can bring that up. Um, we meet on Monday, so unfortunately, it won't be until next next meeting. Next meeting, but um, I can ask about uh, if there's anyone going to be part of that. I unfortunately will not be joining the this. Uh, we do have some travel restrictions. All right. Um. What about any of the other events, Oliver, like Connected America? I feel like that might be North Central. I can't remember. Um, Big Five is going to be in Austin. That's all the way out in May. But thinking about it ahead of time is easier with the travel restrictions. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, essentially, I you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's all the semantics, but I mean, we don't have a hard, we don't have a hard travel restriction. It's more we're you know we're making choices, right? So yeah. Um, so I, I mean, I think for example, um, uh, uh, let's see here. It's a little bit further down there, maybe on the list, but um, if there is a cloud native telco day for North America, then you know that is most likely going to, um, you'll see at least myself there, but. Um, I mean, Matrix is definitely going to be at uh, Mobile World Congress, but I will not be there. All right. Sounds good. Well, we'll figure it out as we're going along. I think this year is there's a lot of unknowns. <clears throat> <clears throat> how the economy actually goes um a lot of folks are looking at it as a big downturn yeah um 
you know, I think in light of the last week or two of all the what we've seen with Microsoft and Amazon and Salesforce and on and on, <laughs> it's kind of put a little bit of a a more negative <laughs> tone to the to the market for sure. <clears throat> All right, take a look at the Explorer Quest. Um, well, this one is very old. It's the only one. Am I in the right one? Yeah, okay, working group. Oh. Did the, okay, it was resolved, the changes, and they just got approved. And apparently I'm not. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do we just need another approval? Is that what we're needing? Yeah, it's just uh, playing a new format, which is more readable, I guess. So, so you if you go to the file changes uh you can see your um you click in the file view or mm -hmm. i'm trying Um, I don't see it's it says it's loading. I don't know if you'll see that bar, but it's just going, going, going. Let me see if I can be just from your side or now, I don't know if it's actually gonna show when this bar finishes or not, since it hasn't done anything. No, the bar is just an animation. I'm still on the main page. Let's see. Okay, theoretically it should be showing. I don't see anything, I'm gonna reload. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is, look, immediate. All right, go ahead. I think if you, uh, with a way to display that as a human readable way, uh, the three dots or? Oh, sure. I've looked at so many of those diffs, I didn't even think about it. Um, let's see, um, it's interesting. It's not giving the option for the. Oh the, yeah, you have to click in the view file. Yeah. View file. Yeah. That is. That is the proposal, I guess. Oh, okay, cool. This is a new template type. Ah, that looks pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. I didn't know that you can do that. So. Right. Well, um, looks good to me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and merge it.
Where does that go? That's well, I guess that's just the GitHub template. Okay. Um, I think that the only issue that has been discussed was about the one one process per per container, which Gregory uh, gave us uh, interesting feedback. I don't know if you want to. Where is that? <clears throat> is that a GitHub uh, issue or something else? No, it, it is an issue. Um, should be. Uh, Oh, here we go. Oh. Yeah, that one. All right. Um, well, it'd be nice if uh, maybe Gerge can join us in the future. I know that Watson said that he was going to be speaking with uh, Gerge soon. I guess they had had some messages and so maybe just having a call to dig in further. And I, I know that there was a microservice paper, cloud native microservices uh, related for telco stuff. And I think general cloud native usage that's um, either gone out or going out. Um, Lucina, do you recall if, if that was published or is it being published, the microservice paper? I don't have an update on the published date yet. All right. Um, so I know he was planning on talking and there'd probably be content to put in here over that, but it, do you, do you want to talk about this at all right now or hold off until Gerge or someone can join us? Uh, you're talking to me yeah well i just want to mention like uh, i i tried to investigate a little more uh the reasons behind that i found interesting information um uh, so obviously there is like like because uh Gregory was mentioned about uh performance impact on on having some scenarios where you can be affected having just one process per container and is using certain resources. Mm -hmm. So, so I investigated a little bit more about that, and and there's no, I couldn't find any any place. Actually, in some places I found like they were not prohibiting to have multiple processes per container. So basically, the only uh, strong argument to to run multiple processes for using a process manager inside of the container. So, and there are multiple tools to achieve that. So, um, so I don't know if we should have changed the, 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 the proposal, like, like saying, well, obviously it's much better to, to deal with a single process in terms of like a log trace, tracing logs and, um, we would single one thing. Actually, the principle is is name it as a one single concern. Like so, the only thing that you have to concern in one in the container is one single process, and that's easier to manage and troubleshoot and everything. But if for some reason you have to do it, you have to make sure that the uh, the entry point is pointing to a con uh, a container manager who can prop properly propagate the signals to the container runtime. So, so that was my investigation. So, uh, but I, I couldn't find any other disadvantage like performance or misusing resources or anything like that.
Yeah, I think a lot of this comes down to, um, well, the first thing is we're talking about best practices and, and those are communicating what's recommended as the default or general, you know, in general, what do we think that people should do? And with experience, community, everything else saying, here is what we think is the guideline for that, not that there's other cases. Um, and I think that distinction is important. We have a lot of times where the conversations can get stuck on the mi minority of cases, edge cases and everything else versus mm -hmm. what are best practices the default. So this is related to microservice best practices and splitting up the behavior where you're saying do one thing and do it well and you know unix mindset, <laughs> which is related to microservices and that concept is very, very way older than OpenStack and kubernetes and virtualization unless you go back and start thinking of like actually where where did virtualization come from and the the vms and stuff on hardware and even there you actually did a lot of separation of what you're doing for control it just tied into physical parts of the system so anyways um if we think that unix concept and what i think was a big driver in, in what the microservices are and splitting up that's what this is really talking about so when you're looking at using supervisors and stuff, yes, you can do, do it and you can start having multiple process and doing it well, but you're not having separation of um, that behavior and what, what each service is going to maintain. And not that it's not, you turn out performance is required or whatever else it may be that says, well, in this case, we need it, but it's the in general case. You can use a supervisor and still have one process type. Um, so actually, actually, the second paragraph, uh, it's talking a little bit about that case. Uh, I mean, I found in that, in the link. Which this one? The, yeah, if you click in the trivial, uh, yeah, that link, it is giving an example of uh, one app, which is having just, uh, it, it, it was containerized, but it was not propagating the, the, the signaling. So it's a very simplistic Python app, which is <laughs> um, raising it's an not error. It's not the signaling? No, it, it seems like once that they put it inside of a container, it's missing the signaling, uh, mm -hmm. so. So then it's not handling um, Pro properly, yeah. signals properly. So one of the things that's um, occurring right now, as far as in the test suite, which and related to write-ups for, I think, more in-depth technical papers is related to this around handling different signals and stuff. And we're looking at being able to test the individual ones. I don't know if those would make it specifically into like essential best practices, but definitely part of the whole tool set where you say, um, we don't have a single process type, but all of our processes that are running handle signals correctly, or we do have a single process type and we handle this correctly but not these others so there's a larger suite of things that we're checking for um and this will definitely be part of it sig term and sig kill specifically yeah so probably is is not part of the the proposal i mean the proposal yeah. is it's more clear like one single process per per container yeah. um 
but yeah, this is probably as, maybe as another best practice. Yeah, um, how do you determine if a container is actually alive um, versus a zombie container? Um, mm. And I, I think that would be related to another effort that's happening around some more in-depth uh, testing. One of the efforts is around using libpcap and re doing replays of network traffic. And ideally from, from the test suite side, there'll be some way of, there'll be a, a hook and some way of dropping in traffic to send a little bit more advanced traffic into a CNF than what might be tested with the liveliness and readiness. Potentially, you could have a CNF respond to live, liveliness and readiness um, test that make it seem that the CNF is okay, at least to the Kubernetes for not um, throwing the container away and starting a new one. And, and yet the CNF is actually maybe has a process that's running as a zombie or something because of signals handling improperly so having a way to run real traffic some subset has been something asked for for a long time and that's something that's being looked at right now that could help there and then of course writing up a, a practice around that sounds good i'm wondering if where we should keep it on the write-ups for best practices, how fine-grained we should be? Like actually having best practices for, you know, almost like this, other than Docker. Best practices for PID signal handling versus having something around um, like, having this container should have one process type. I mean, that this is related for sure. And, you know. Yeah, sounds like a best practice for best practice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm thinking of 12 factor apps and um, where things are, you know, there's a lot of things under this. Um, let's look at like this one. This is a pretty, um, it's, it's not as detailed. I would, like this isn't talking about signal handling, but there's gonna be when we're talking about the processes and running these as stateless, okay. Um, share nothing. Okay, that's really the only thing they're doing here on this. And also give the, the possibility to, uh, I was just saying that, yeah, that also opens the possibility to run one or more things from the beginning, it's not limiting single one process. Yeah. I, I'm more of looking, what are the, what are the best practices that actually um, communicate there's a bunch of other ones when i look at this i know that to implement what they're saying here there's a lot of little practices that you're going to have to implement and they're not going to write out every single one i'm thinking about what do we want in scope for the working group right now 
we keep breaking things into smaller pieces. And I think it's good for the overall discussion, but at some point, what it, our current goal has been to get this thing filled out. And if we have, I, I definitely think we're gonna have more than this if you know we keep going down the path we're doing. But we're not trying to have, you should, you know, your PID, you know, PID one process has these 20 attributes and we're gonna write a best practice about each one of those attributes. And so we end up with a thousand different best practices, which is unmanageable, of course, realistically for us to actually do. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out at what level do we go to with something like this? And I think what you have here would be a good one, but just trying to see where we would collapse it and it would be part of maybe one proposal that goes forward. Thanks for the, the link there, Lucina. And um, just whenever that's ready for public consumption, it'll be published there, but we'll bring that over as well. All right. Um, we're I think we're close enough to time. Does anybody have anything else or we can stop here and then maybe come back? I'm okay with that. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.